I remember when I was a kid and would go trick-or-treating, my favorite house in our neighborhood was the one that would give away the fun size packages of Micro Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. The jigsaw, the one saw to rule them all. Sort of. My table saw probably gets used more than any tool in my shop, but it has one big limitation. It can't cut curves. Not counting CNC's, lasers, and other specialty equipment, there are basically three power tools available for making curved cuts in wood. A scroll saw is great for cutting tight, intricate curves in thin material and is most commonly used for decorative objects. A bandsaw is probably the most common tool for cutting curves in a woodworking shop, but it's expensive, it takes up space, and it has its limitations. A jigsaw can handle almost all of the curved cuts you'll want to make and more. It's versatile, it takes up no space, and it's affordable. In fact, after decades of woodworking, I find myself using my jigsaw more and my bandsaw less. It's that handy. Let me start by trying to clear up some confusion in its name. In the past, a jigsaw was often called a saber saw. Today, a reciprocating saw is sometimes called a saber saw, but most likely it's called a Sawzall, which is just a brand name, kind of like how people call circular saws skill saws. And what we call a scroll saw today used to be referred to as a jigsaw. A jigsaw uses a small blade and it cuts with an up and down motion. The thin size of the blades makes it easy to cut pretty tight radiuses and it's handy for cutting holes, something a bandsaw can't do. Its biggest limitation is that you can't cut really thick lumber. Usually this isn't much of an issue because I rarely cut anything, especially curves, in anything thicker than a 2x4. The saw rests against your workpiece on this base or shoe. And most jigsaws will let you tilt that base to make beveled cuts, but I don't think I've ever used that feature. Most saws also have variable speeds. This is useful for preventing burning as it cuts. In general, you can use a fast speed for pine and other softwoods and a slower speed to reduce burning on hardwoods. To adjust the speed, there's usually a dial, plus squeezing the trigger produces variable speeds on mine. I usually just keep the dial set to its fastest speed and use the trigger for adjusting the speed as I'm cutting. A lot of jigsaws have an adjustment for orbital action cutting. When that's switched on, the blade pivots forward and backward in addition to going up and down. This makes for an aggressive cut and really speeds up the cutting on large pieces. The drawback is that it produces a more ragged cut. I rarely use the orbital cutting feature, maybe occasionally for rough construction projects. If you've never owned a jigsaw and are looking to buy your first one, I'll narrow your first decision for you. Only buy a jigsaw that uses T-shank blades. Check on this before you leave the store. In general, there are two types of blade shanks that hold the blade to the saw. The first kind and the most common is the U-shank. These might require a hex wrench or some other kind of tool to install them into the saw. I used to have a saw like this and it was a pain to use and sometimes the blades would fall out of the saw while I was making a cut. Cut. It's just not worth the hassle. The second type are the T-shank blades like these. You don't need a special tool to attach them. They quick change to your saw in a second and they stay very secure. The teeth on jigsaw blades can point upward or downward. The blade produces a smoother cut on the side of the wood that it's cutting toward. I actually prefer the reverse blades, the ones that cut on the downstroke because usually I draw my cutting lines on the good side of the board. But most blades sold are the ones that cut on the upstroke. I have no idea why. Blades are also sold in teeth per inch. The fewer the teeth per inch, the faster but rougher the cut. A 10 TPI blade is good for most woodworking applications. This narrow blade is 20 TPI and it's great for cutting really tight curves. There are two things to consider when using a jigsaw. First, understand that the blade is unsupported on one end. This is usually only a problem if you take curves too fast on thicker boards. The blade can flex, causing the edge of your board not to be square with the face. The other thing to keep in mind is the length of your blade and make sure that it's at least an inch or so longer than the thickness of the wood you need to cut. It's also worth mentioning that a jigsaw is really one of the safest power tools you can use since the cutting blade 
blade is beneath the wood and away from your fingers. I usually support my workpiece just by holding it against my workbench and making the cut as close to the edge of the workbench as I can. Sometimes the blade runs into the workbench, but that's okay. Unlike other saws, to start my cut with a jigsaw, personally, I like to press the blade up against the wood before turning it on. I find that it just grabs better that way. If the saw is already running and I press it into the wood, it tends to slide around trying to find the cut line. Be conscious of keeping the base of the saw pressed against the board. It's real easy to lift it up without realizing it, causing your edges to not be square. Slow down your feed rate for tighter curves. If the curve is too tight for the blade to turn, I kind of like to carve with the blade. You can even sweep the saw blade side to side and kind of nibble away at the wood. A jigsaw is a must-have tool for cutting holes or other inside shapes, something you can't do with a bandsaw. Just drill a hole, drop your blade into it, and start cutting. If you need to cut a square hole, drill holes in two corners and connect them. It's also great for cutting handles. Those are just a few of the things you can do with a jigsaw, one of the most underappreciated, overlooked tools for making things. Hey, if you have any tips for using a jigsaw, leave them down in the comments. I want to thank Casper for helping to make this video possible by sponsoring Woodworking for Mere Mortals. Casper has created the perfect mattresses and sells them directly to consumers, eliminating the high pressure commission driven sales Casper can charge a lot less. This mattress comes delivered to your door in a how did they do that box? I've been sleeping on a Casper mattress for almost two years now and it's just as comfortable as the day I got it. The combination latex memory foam is just as supportive as ever. Time Magazine named it one of the best inventions of 2015. Honestly, it's the best mattress I've ever owned. Okay, so here's the important part. Free shipping to the US and Canada. You can try out a Casper mattress risk-free for 100 nights, and if you decide it's not for you, they'll pick it up and refund everything. Plus, you can take $50 off your first order by going to casper.com slash woodworking and entering the promo code woodworking at check. Out. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these spots. By supporting Casper, you're helping me to continue to create useful content like today's basics video. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this week's video and found it useful. Check out my entire basic series by watching this playlist. There's a lot of great information there to get you started. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week.